Sarah, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? It was uh, a year ago, I was talking to you in Columbus. Yeah. You were with a different company then. I was with a different yeah, company. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tell me uh, a little bit about the decision that went into to coming over here. I mean, obviously, I know the, the fights with Aspen got got scrapped, and there was a, a bunch of weird stuff that happened toward the end there, but then what ultimately was, was behind the decision to make this move? Um, so I think that I had been thinking about, I mean, being older, like you think about retirement, you think about your future and what things that you want, um, not just in your fighting career, but also like in your life. And I, um, I had, I had great, like almost 10 years fighting with the UFC. Mm -hmm. So it was never anything about that. Um, but I just really wanted to see what else was out there. Uh, for a long time, I think that you could only really fight in some promotions and, and be promoted really well as a female. And then sometime in the last, um, excuse me, sometimes in, in the last five years, um, women have gotten a ton of really great opportunities and a ton of promotion and we're really just uh, taking off. And I just wanted to check the landscape out. And I, I'd always fought to where it was a, um, one fight left on the contract, you know, that was pretty standard. And Jen asked me if I wanted to fight to free agency um, before my Carol Hosa fight. And I was like, yeah, I, I think I should. Just, I might have stayed, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I wanted to see if the grass was greener in certain areas and I, it was, <laughs> so. Was, was there any place else that was in consideration? Uh, not for me. Okay. Um, just, just because I really feel like there were other offers, but um, I, it means something to me to be a world champion. Uh, and I, I think that like at 135, UFC has the premier division. And I think at 145, Bellator has th the best fighters, the deepest roster, um, and they have Cyborg. I mean, it's just, so if I want to be a world champion, I felt like that was my avenue. If they had a 135 division, you know, and they had good stack girls in there, I would have obviously liked that. But... I'm not sad about not cutting weight. <laughs> so let me ask you about that because, you, as you mentioned, they do have Cyborg here. But she doesn't have anything booked right now, and, and everybody's kind of like, yeah, what is, is, this, is she coming back? Is she going to go someplace else as a free agent? So, I mean, it w was part of that in, in, your con in, in, in your thought process that, oh, man, I could go over there, would love to fight her, and then she might not even be here for me to fight anyways? Well, I mean, I'm here for 18 months, so she might... I know that she's fought, done, done some boxing, but I believe that, that probably this is her home and that she'll be back. You know, even if she does something else outside of here, I, I, I think she'll be back to Bellator. So even if she does, you know, maybe do something with boxing or kickboxing, she's done Muay Thai fights or PFL, the, you know, million dollar tournaments coming up. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just, in my mind, I imagine her back here, so. Talk about that first matchup then uh, with Arlene. You get to do it in Hawaii. That's not so bad, right? Yeah. So uh, I fought twice in Hawaii for Pro Elite, and I loved fighting there. So I was when they said it, I was like, really look at the matchup and everything and take everything into consideration. Do not accept this because it's Hawaii. And I was like, but uh, no, everything everything is, is good and it's what I wanted. And um, one of my requests coming into Bellator was that they very much put me on the track that I was asking for in the UFC they were uh, right on board to, to do that. So and, and you feel like she, she's the, the right kind of matchup since she's coming off a title, title yeah, shot and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. That puts me immediately in the mix. And that's what I've wanted for like years now. So it's, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. Sarah, great to see you in person. It's good to see you. <laughs> so, you know, with the debut and the change of landscape and everything, obviously been a while since you've had something like this happen and jumping into the deep end a little bit right where you wanted with Arlene and then Hawaii, big card. Do you think there will be any pressure or anything like that just with all these elements going into uh, the debut here? I think like from the moment I started, even as an amateur, I've had pressure uh, in fighting. <laughs> I don't think there's one fight that people didn't expect, you know, me to do well and go and win. So um, I've never not had that. And I honestly is even before that with wrestling. Um, I was 20 years old. I made my first world team and people had high expectations. So I don't know what it's like to go into a thing and not have pressure. So <laughs> I, I put pressure on myself, but I think it's from the outside, too. I just don't mind it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, do you think that in this matchup, you know, Arlene has been 
known more for her striking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, great boxer. Anger Fist is her nickname. <laughs> Fantastic there. So, and obviously you love to wrestle, but in these kind of matchups, do you like to test yourself a little bit and, you know, strike with the striker for maybe a little bit, not the whole fight, but show that you can do that. And we know you have power as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, nothing sets up takedowns better than striking, legit striking, not, uh, not just pawing out there and not doing it to set up, but like actually striking for its own sake. Uh, sets up takedowns very well so also um while i am known for my wrestling and hopefully i'll be known for, for jiu-jitsu as well getting submissions um i've been a wrestler my whole life and even when i couldn't punch correctly they hit i hit hard so <laughs> even if i'm it's the ugliest punch in the world it don't feel good on the other end right. so, <laughs> so i do i enjoy striking for that reason too but throughout the years i've gotten a little bit better too of course, we love to see it. Uh, are you going to stay in Hawaii a little extra? Just turn into a vacation. Why not? So we're, I only have like one more day extra. Um, if I want a vacation, I will book it around one of my fights just because I, I would do, do it like separate, not at the same time. Because so it's it's all business for me, you know, and it's what I love to do. And it definitely is a job. But I go there with nothing else on my mind except the goal. And so I don't think about anything else I don't stay after I come home I see my kids but if I want a vacation I'll just go to Hawaii on my own so. yeah <laughs> and uh, last thing for me any plans to do any more uh, stand-up comedy anytime soon <laughs> you know uh, so uh, I don't have anything set but I liked it a lot more than I thought I would <laughs> so it's not completely out of the question if I got offered something that was really cool to do I think just uh, the experience of it would be too uh, cool for me to pass up. So I, I might do something more. I liked it. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, how does wrestling translate to MMA and double barrel on this one? Were there any wrestlers that you saw coming up? Dan Henderson, DC, Henry Cejudo, that you, the guys that were on the Olympic level, and then, and then you end up doing that in 2004? Mm -hmm. So, really, my my roots, um, the first time I ever watched any fighting was on VHS, and it was two wrestlers from my college at Lock Haven University. It was Tim Boach and Mike Cezanilevich. Um, they both fought for the UFC, and so that was my introduction. It was two of my teammates. Um, and how my, did you ask me how my roots translate? Uh, correct. How does the wrestling translate to MMA? Oh, okay. So I think that some of the aspects that I've seemed to thrive with is um, pushing past your limits, the, the mental conditioning, the physical conditioning, um, the control. Uh, so it's not just submissions, obviously, like jiu-jitsu has, you know, the master at submissions, um, and they can flow through them really quickly. But wrestling is really about completely dominating and breaking your opponents. And that's one thing that I think that is my favorite. I do like hitting, don't get me wrong. There's something wrong with that and TKOs, but feeling an opponent break, you know, under my pressure and will, there's just no, there's no feeling like it. Now I say that also because I've never had a knockout, but maybe the strikers would be like, ah, ha, ha. But for me, that's one of the biggest things that wrestling taught me is how to press and you know, keep coming and find different ways and every way that your opponent tries to find a way out and to escape, like just crushing it until they, you know, they kind of give up on themselves. That's a great feeling. And my last question is, how does your experience, or Arlene's fought Cyborg twice, mm -hmm. but you fought Amanda Nunes, Julianne Pena, Ronda Rousey, Lauren Murphy. How does your experience, uh, how will you use that to your advantage versus Arlene? So I just view it um, like both of us are seasoned fighters. Uh, both of us have great skill sets. Um, and I don't think that my, my other opponents, uh, I don't think it offers any like distinct, I'm not gonna use it to any advantage. I'm really gonna take what I do best and I'm just gonna go out there and impress it upon her um, the best that I can. And, and at the end of the day, we're both gonna go do the best you know but like it's not that that who i fought that's not going to win it for me me going out there and taking the fight that's what's going to win it for me